Good afternoon. My name is Dennis Higgs. I'm chairman of Nevada Exploration. This is our disclaimer. I will very likely be making some forward-looking statements. So Nevada. Nevada is a world leader. Over 224 million ounces of gold have been produced since uh, through 2016. Nevada produces more gold per unit area than any other place on the planet. But the uh, most known deposits in Nevada have been discovered on or near the mountain ranges, the, uh, where the can, geologists can see and project the rocks under the surface. Uh, more than half of Nevada is covered by sand and gravel in the valleys. And uh, of course, those areas then have not been systematically explored properly for gold. Let's go back and look at a little bit of history of Nevada. Nevada was flat 25, 40 to 25 million years ago. Uh, that's when these Carlin type uh, gold deposits came into Nevada, mineralizing events and so on. And then about 15 million years ago, you had tectonic events that pulled Nevada apart. That created the block faulting, some drop, blocks dropped and some were pushed up. And that created the mountains and valleys that we have today. And of course, then of the, the valleys were covered with sand and gravel, uh, but the gold is still there. It's, uh, most of it or a lot of it's been discovered in the mountains so far, but the gold is still in the valley. So, over 330 million ounces of gold have been discovered in Nevada through 2017. With over half of Nevada covered in sand and gravel in the valleys, it's postulated that there's another 300 million ounces of gold in these basins, in the valleys. So the question is, how do we find that gold? And the answer is groundwater. So, water is a universal solvent. Water, uh, as groundwater flows and so on underneath the surface, It'll pick up the scent of whatever it comes into contact with, whether it's gold, arsenic, antimony, and so on. What Nevada Exploration has done is we analyze, analyze these groundwater samples to detect rich concentrations of gold and other pathfinder elements, and of course we follow that back to its bedrock source. So here's a map of Nevada. The dots uh, colored in teal green are 50,000 government samples. These are samples that were taken for water wells, domestic use, ranches, and so on. And uh, the government, of course, did not analyze for gold, but what they did analyze is all the to toxic metals, arsenic, antimony, mercury, and so on. And as it turns out, those metals are the pathfinders for these big gold deposits in Nevada. So Nevada Exploration collected all 50,000 samples, put them into a database, and then we had the background data for Nevada. Then we went on and collected another 6,000 samples of our own, and these samples we did assay for gold. So now we've got the treasure map for Nevada. We know where the gold anomalies are. We know where all the pathfinder elements are in this groundwater survey. It's the largest golden groundwater survey done anywhere in the world. And right now you can see we've got three, let me see if this works, three sample or uh, targets that we've staked so far, Kelly Creek and then a couple in Grass Valley south of Cortez. So. Let's take a look. Here's our uh, map of Nevada, and we're going to zoom in on Grass Valley specifically. Here's Grass Valley. You've got three or four gold deposits in the north end of the valley. You've got Pipeline, Cortez, and Gold Rush. These are the best gold mines and barracks uh, gold mine portfolio worldwide. There's over 50 million ounces in these deposits, and Cortez produces over a million ounces a year. Uh, we're going to take a look at Grass Valley. Whoops. We're going to take a look at Grass Valley. This button's very sensitive. Here's Grass Valley. It's to the south end of Cortez. You see all these black dots? I'm going to use my own uh, laser, I think, because I'm hitting the, my fingers are too thick. I'm hitting all the wrong buttons here. OK. Here's Grass Valley. Each one of these black dots is a sample that we have taken for and analyzed for gold and groundwater. Hundreds of samples, hundreds of negatives or no's, nothings, blanks. But we've got two areas where we've got very strong anomalous gold and groundwater. So we staked those projects. One we called our Grass Valley project. The other one is South Grass Valley. So let's zoom in on South Grass Valley. Now we've taken a look at just South Grass Valley. Each one of these X's is another sample. In some cases, we took two or three water samples within the same hole. We've got uh, varying depths, and it gives us the direction of the groundwater flow and it gives us a 3D uh, model of the uh, golden groundwater. Here's what that golden groundwater looks like. Um, in this part of Nevada, if you're getting 10 parts per trillion golden groundwater, you've got an anomaly. 
In this part of Nevada, we're getting upwards of a thousand parts per trillion golden groundwater. This is a screaming golden groundwater anomaly. Remember, we've got the entire background for the state of Nevada for this. And then we applied some gravity geophysics. Remember, we're in the valleys, the surface is flat. We use gravity geophysics to tell us what it looks like underneath the surface. surface. And you see we got a very strong topographic relief going on in here. That's a potential fault structure, that's a potential plumbing for the fluids that come up, the mineralizing fluids that brought the gold into this part of Nevada. So, so far we've got the groundwater flow, we've got a screaming golden groundwater anomaly, and we've got a potential plumbing system. We look at this again, here's South Grass Valley again, now you're looking at, here's the golden groundwater, we've got exposed lower plate carbonates on the west side of the property and down at the south end. These lower plate carbonates are the host rock for those giant gold mines at the north end of Grass Valley. So now it looks like we've potentially got the right host rock. So we did an aeromagnetic survey. The uh, uh, lower plate carbonates have a magnetic low signature. So underneath the surface, it's looking like this whole area here, shaded in blue, is lower plate carbonates. And it's about a 15 square kilometer area. So now it looks like we've got the right host rock. And again, the plumbing and the golden groundwater, everything's coming together to tell us that there's something going on here and we need to drill this property. So here's our planned drill program. We plan for 15 holes. Uh, the ones shaded or X's colored in red are the planned drill holes for 2018. And the rest we'll plan on drilling in 2019. It shows, of course, we're planning on drilling over our potential lower plate carbonates and, of course, uh, where we're getting that fault structure. On the same scale as this map, we've got Cortez Hills. That's about 10 million ounces at the north end of the valley. You can see it's, uh, the footprint is not a large deposit. It's only 300 meters across. It's about 10 million ounces. Here's Gold Rush. Again, at the north end of the valley, it's about 15 million ounces. Again, either one of these or both of them could fit within our property on the area that we're excited about. Gold Rush is about 300 meters across, but maybe uh, 2,000 meters in length. So, why is that important or why is this important? This is a deposit footprint. When the mineralizing fluids come up into this part of Nevada, the gold deposits out first, comes out of solution first, and the other elements come out later, so they have a larger halo around the gold deposit. And uh, the farthest, farthest out is the uh, isotope oxygen 18 halo. So, this provides, here's your gold deposit, here's your geochemical signature or halo around the deposit, and the oxygen 18 uh, isotope it goes out the farthest. It can go out as far as 1,000 meters. Why is this important? When we're drilling, I mentioned the size of that Cortez Hills footprint is only 300 meters across. In our drilling program, if we drill down in here and we miss the gold deposit, well, maybe we're in the isotope halo for oxygen 18, or maybe, even better, maybe we're over here somewhere where we're drilling through the arsenic or mercury halo. So we're using these halos then with a couple of holes. We can use these halos in this isotope analysis to vector in towards where the gold deposit is. So, discovery holes. Early discovery hole at uh, Cortez Hills was one and a half ounces gold per ton over 400 feet. That's a very significant hole, obviously. Uh, just recently, this summer, at Barrick announced their gold um, four-mile discovery just north of Gold Rush. It's, uh, they're getting 60 and a half meters over, sorry, 71 grams over 16 and a half meters. That's about 50 feet of over two ounces gold per ton. You can see there's a couple other values there. These are very significant results. Imagine if we were to drill into a gold deposit and have those kind of results. We've got a little 40 cent stock here. So not only that, would that of course be significant for our discovery, but of course it would then validate the entire database that we have for Nevada. We would have the treasure map for Nevada. We would know where we've got another six or eight targets that we could go, go out and stake and repeat that success. So very briefly, our share structure, we've got 76 and a half million shares outstanding, fully diluted, about 97 million shares. Management and insiders own about 35, 36%. That doesn't include some of our family members. If we add those in, it's probably closer to 40%. And as recently as August this year, we invested another three quarters of a million dollars. We're fully committed. We believe in what we're doing. Our proven technical team, Wade Hodges, has spent his entire career discovering gold mines, developing gold mines in Nevada, 40 years. He's discovered, uh, developed, involved in the discovery and development of nine gold mines, totaling over 30 million ounces. Ken Tuller, he's also spent most of his career in Nevada, involved in the discovery and development of five gold mines, totaling over seven million ounces. Together, these gentlemen have discovered more than 10% of the gold ever discovered in Nevada. So we've got a team that knows what they're doing. So very briefly, that's our drill rig. We've drilled three holes now into the, out of the six holes I mentioned. 
Uh, the first hole, uh, it was a granitic intrusive. There's good and bad news with that. The bad news is it's not a good host for the Carlin type gold deposits. The good news is it shows we've got the right structure because the granitic intrusive comes up in the same fault structure as the mineralizing fluids. Uh, then we went over immediately uh, after didn't drill very far into that once you hit the granitic intrusive, went over and drilled hole number two, and that hole's even better than we hoped for. We drilled right down the fault structure. We got intensely altered lower plate carbonates. Those are the rocks that host, host those giant gold deposits to the north. These Carlin type gold deposits are micron gold. It's very, very small. You cannot, cannot see the gold. So we sent everything off for assay, and uh, now we're sitting and waiting for uh, the assay lab to tell us what we've got. But I have to say, these deposits are multi-million ounce deposits. They're big, they have a big footprint, and uh, they're worth multi-billions of dollars. So you can't win the lottery if you don't have a ticket. That's my presentation.